I'm Dr. Miriam Yutkoff of Women OBGYN. I'm going to be discussing options that you have to screen to see if your baby is at increased risk for having an abnormal number of chromosomes. That's something that we call aneuploidy. And we've made up a booklet for you that goes over this test that we're offering you and other tests to screen to see if the baby is at increased risk for certain types of birth defects. We call this booklet Testing Options for Birth Defects. The discussion that I'm having today is really geared toward women that we feel who are at low risk for delivering a baby with a chromosomal abnormality. In general, chromosomal abnormalities increase as a woman ages. What a chromosomal abnormality is, specifically, or an abnormal number of chromosomes is, is if the fetus has an extra chromosome or is missing a chromosome. We normally have 46 chromosomes, 23 chromosomes that we've gotten from our mother and 23 chromosomes that we've gotten from our father. But if a person has an extra chromosome or missing a chromosome, we call this aneuploidy or a chromosomal abnormality in the number of chromosomes. One of the most common chromosomal abnormalities is Down syndrome. That's when there's an extra 21st chromosome. But there can be other of the, of the uh, 26 chromosomes that are either duplicated or are missing. And depending on which chromosome is duplicated or is missing would, would uh, predict what our expectations are for either physical or mental limitations. Now, it's always your option whether you even have any screening tests done. But if you do, you have several options. The standard test that we offer is a test that we call sequential screen. And again, we have all of that described in this booklet here. We also will give you a booklet that specifically goes over that testing option. What the sequential screen is, is a series of tests that will recalculate the chance of this baby having an abnormal number of chromosomes. The test involves a sonogram on your fetus at a very specific time in the pregnancy, between 11 and 13 and a half weeks. And then we do a blood test on the woman at the same time. And we do a second blood test on the woman about a month later at about 16 weeks. This series of tests is called sequential screen. And if you desire to go for this test, we will give you a referral that looks like this. We usually have you go for this sonogram uh, at a radiologist and we will actually list for you on this referral form the appropriate time to go for the test because the timing is very critical. What you would do if you elect to go for the sequential screen is you would go for the sonogram. And again, we don't do that sonogram in our office. We refer you to a radiologist. You would go for that sonogram. The sonogram tech would take the measurement of what we call nuchal translucency, which is to see how much fluid is under the skin of the baby's neck. We will take that measurement along with a blood test that we do on you at the same time. So then you need to come back to our office and have the blood part of the test done. For your convenience, if you would like, you can also schedule your appointment, your next appointment, that same day. And it's okay if we had told you to come for the appointment either a week earlier or a week later. Um, it's, it, 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 it doesn't matter. We're very flexible with the timing of the appointments. Just make sure if you schedule 
your appointment to see the doctor that same day that you have the appointment for the sonogram about an hour and a half before the appointment with the doctor. Anyway, if that test shows the baby to be at increased risk, you, it doesn't mean the baby's affected. This test will pick up maybe about 90% of chromosomal abnormalities. And if the test shows the baby to be at increased risk, then you would have further testing to see if, in the baby, if indeed the baby really were affected. Now, the, one of the further tests that we offer if the sequential screen is abnormal is a blood test, simply a blood test on the woman that picks up fetal DNA and thereby picks up the majority of chromosomal abnormal, abnormal infants. We are now allowed to offer you that test that we call non-invasive prenatal test as a primary test. However, it is more expensive than the sequential screen, than the series of the two blood tests and the sonogram. And because it's relatively new that we're allowed to offer you this, we don't always know how insurance will cover it or what your out-of-pocket costs will be. So if you decide that you would want to go for the non-invasive prenatal test, we suggest that you call this company, Natera, which is where we would send the blood, to check to find out what your out-of-pocket, your estimated out-of-pocket costs would be. If you want the non-invasive prenatal test rather than the sequential screen, just come in for your routine scheduled appointment and we can draw it at that appointment. It's important to understand, however, that you cannot combine both tests. So if you're going to do the non-invasive prenatal test, you just have the blood test. You do not go for the sonogram. If you do elect to have the non-invasive prenatal test rather than the sequential screen, that test can also tell the baby's gender. If you do not have the non-invasive prenatal test, you would ordinarily find out the gender if you desired when you have your anatomical fetal ultrasound of the baby, which is done at about 18 to 20 weeks by our maternal fetal medicine specialist. In that anatomical sonogram, they're looking at all of the baby's internal organs, the heart, the kidney, the spine, um, and quite honestly, many times they would pick up a, a, a fetus who had an aneuploidy, an abnormal number of chromosomes, because babies with chromosomal abnormalities many times also have other physical abnormalities that are detected at the 20-week sonogram. However, having one of these other tests, either the sequential screen or the non-invasive prenatal test, will significantly increase the chance of us finding a child who has an abnormal number of chromosomes. I hope this has helped to clarify the testing options that you have. Thank you.